boys and girls i hope you are doing awesome how are you enjoying this summer i can hear you say it's so hot <laughs> you know what i say to people don't complain don't complain because you know how we always look for the sun in Ireland, <laughs> but I know it is indeed hot. But anyway, we're going to have a hot service, right? Are you ready for children's service? Get your friends round, call your mama, call your dada, tell them to come over, that you want, to, you want them to join you as we worship, as we listen to the Bible story, and also as we do the quiz and come and have a you know beautiful discussion and then of course the homework so it's, it's always a full package right we worship god we take our time to lift our hands dance right before your tv or whatever phone you're using or device you're using and then we also spend time in the word and we also do the quiz and so i i know i know that you've been having fun and really learning and growing so this is another time to have a spe special, special date time with God. You know why? He's waiting for you. And he wants to hear you. Praise him and worship him. So I'll see you after the story time. Bye. Hello friends, I'm so excited to see you this beautiful morning. Are you happy? Now I would like for you to give Jesus a shout. Singing about the love of Christ this morning, just put your hands together this way. Come on, hey, all right, let's go. Your love is so wonderful, your love is so wonderful, so high. I can get over it, so low, I can get on the rate, so wide, oh, I can get around it, Jesus. You give me wonderful love. I would like for you to sing along with me this time. Are we ready? Hey, are you ready? Let's go, let's go. Your love, say, your love, so wonderful. Your love, so wonderful, so high. I can get over it so low. I can get under it so wide. I can get around it. Jesus, you give me wonderful love so wide oh, I can get around it. Jesus, you give me wonderful love so wide oh, I can get around it. Jesus, you give me wonderful love. Now there's this part I love so much. It's very simple. It goes this way. Listen, it never runs out on me. That's the kind of love that has found me. It never runs out on me. That's the kind of love that has found me. Let's sing together. It never runs out on me. That's the kind of love that has found me. Hey, it never runs out on me. That's the kind of love that has found me. And it is so high. I can get over it so low. I can get on the rain so wide. I can get around it. Jesus, you give me wonderful love so wide. I can get around it. Jesus, hey, I give me wonderful love so wide. I can get around it. Jesus, you give me, you give me one more time. Love. It's so wide. I can get around it. Jesus, you give me, you give me wonderful love. Hallelujah. Come on, clap. Shout! Woo! Jesus, you love me too much, oh, oh. too much, oh. too much, oh. too much oh. Too excess love. Oh. oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, oh. too much, oh. too much, oh. too much oh. excess love. Oh. I want to hear you sing it loud. Jesus, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, oh. Too much, hey. oh, too much, oh, excess love. Let's sing it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, oh, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love. Now listen to this part. Are you ready? Your love is amazing. Your love is amazing. Yo, 
amazing. Your love is amazing. Your love is amazing. Your love is amazing. Your love is amazing. You're 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 amazing. Yeah. Jesus, you love me too much. And now we have the lesson for the week. Please listen carefully. By killing the giant Goliath, David became a hero. God's people loved him. But King Saul became jealous of David. King Saul had a son named Jonathan, who was a prince of Israel and David's best friend. King Saul told Jonathan and all his servants to kill David. So Jonathan decided to warn his friend. My father is looking for a chance to kill you, but I have a plan. Tomorrow morning, you hide behind that big rock. I'll come out with my bow and pretend to shoot at a target. Then I'll send a boy to find the arrows. If I say to him, no, you've gone too far, the arrows are closer to me, that means you are safe. But if I say, go farther, the arrows went past the big rock, that means my father won't change his mind and you are in danger. So David hid behind the rock. Saul and Jonathan were nearby. The king was very angry with his son. Jonathan! Don't you know that as long as David is alive, you'll never be king? He must die! But father, David has done nothing wrong. Then Saul threw his spear at Jonathan, trying to kill his own son. Ah! So Jonathan and his servant ran away toward the big rock. Jonathan said to the boy, Run and find this arrow. When the boy ran toward the rock, Jonathan shot the arrow way beyond the rock and called out, Go further. The arrows went past you. So David knew the news was bad. When the boy left, David came out and hugged his dear friend. Even though they were grown men, they were both crying. But David cried the most. David, my friend, go in peace. We have been promised by the Lord that you and I and all our descendants will be friends forever. Years later, Jonathan and his father died in a battle against Israel's enemy, and David became king. Because of his great friendship with Jonathan, King David took care of Jonathan's crippled son, Mephibosheth, for the rest of his life. Hey friends, so our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 4. And it goes like this. The next morning, Jonathan spoke with his father about David, saying many good things about him. The king must not sin against his servant David. Jonathan said, he's never done any harm to you. He has always helped you in any way he could. And that is our memory verse for today. Wow, boys and girls, what a story. Have you actually ever heard of the word loyalty? It's spelled L-O-Y-A-L-T-Y, loyalty. I want you to, uh, you know, after this lesson, use the dictionary, search that word up, 
ask your parents to help you even understand the word better loyalty is very similar to the world the word called faithfulness have you heard of that one before you probably have heard of faith in church at some time but you may not have heard of the word faithfulness and if you have kudos to you i'm saying those words because that's what jonathan and david had so i know you have friends in school friends at church and you make friends probably at home so your neighbors right so this is a culture that you must have when you build relationships when you have friendships there must be loyalty and of course i know you're picking the good friends like jonathan and david did they both were very good friends make sure your circle of friends the friends that you have in school at church wherever they may be make sure they are good friends and how do you know good friends people who fear the lord jonathan feared the lord and that was why he chose god's will over his father's will like you know the bible says do not disobey your parents but in this case Saul, which was Jonathan's father, actually was disobeying God. And God is the greatest greatest parent, like he's the parent of all. We are all children of God. So even daddy and mommy are children of God, right? So that was why Jonathan went against his father's um, decision. And he was there to back up David, even in his lowest times, right? Jonathan should have been crying and going you know for the for the seat and say you know no one is ever going to take my seat i'm the next i'm the next in line i'm the next heir right but he didn't do that he partnered with god he sided david because he knew david was god's choice what a good friend what a good friend and there comes loyalty and you know what today i want you to know that loyalty pays off faithfulness pays off when you're loyal to your friends don't be the one that will betray don't be the one that will backstab don't be the one that will gossip don't be the one that will you know be a traitor no you're a child of god and like jonathan stand for truth stand as a backup as a support system for your friends right so as jonathan did for david you know what it paid off how of course you know the story later David had to be the very support system for Jonathan's son years and years later. What a world. So today, remain loyal. Be a good friend. God is counting on you. I hope you enjoyed that lesson as much as I did. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, friends. How are you doing? So, you know what time it is? Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. It's quiz time. So let's get straight right into it. The first question says, Who was the first king of Israel? Who was the first king of Israel? A. Samuel. B. Saul. C. David. D. Trump. And if you answered B. Saul, then you are correct. Definitely not Trump. Next question. Who anointed Saul king? Who anointed Saul as king? A. David B. Samuel C. Saul Yes, the answer is B. Samuel. He anointed Saul as king. Next question. God's spirit left Saul because Saul did what? God's spirit left Saul because Saul did what? A changed his mind b disobeyed his parents c saul disobeyed god d saul wanted to go back home and if you answered c then you are correct god's spirit left saul because saul disobeyed god next question number four man looks at what a outward appearance b the heart c what you think and if you answered a then you are correct man looks at the outward appearance 
next question number five according to the bible god looks at what a your height b what others think c what you think of yourself d the heart and if you answer d then you are correct according to the bible god looks at the heart next question Saul became a prideful, B happy, C hungry, D tired. Saul became what? And if you answered A prideful, then you are correct. Saul became prideful. Pride is not good. Don't become prideful, friends. Next question. The Spirit of God never left A. Saul B Tony. C. The Israelites. D. David. And if you answer D, then you are correct. The Spirit of God never left David. Number eight, the last question. Before David was anointed, he was A. Washing his car. B. Taking a nap. C. Writing a paper. D. Tending sheep in the field. And if you answer D, then you are correct. The answer is D. Before David was anointed, he was tending sheep in the field. And those are all the questions we have for you today. Have a nice day. Bye.